Welcome everybody to our virtual OPD series, which this month we're switching to PD. Our enlisted brethren and sisterin uh, will be viewing our talks and partaking in our live discussions. So welcome everybody. Uh, moving forward, we plan on finding ways to bring our professional development together and sync up regularly. Uh, so look for more of these collaborative efforts uh, in the future. For Battle Rhythm, expect these videos to drop on Wednesdays and our live chats to occur Thursdays at 10 a.m. local for the month of June. We've got a lot of ground to cover and I'll move fast, but since it's a video, you can go back and catch something you might have missed. All right, for the uninitiated, each month I like to do a quick rehack of the focus areas for the year. Uh, these are the ones I had for the officers. Um, you'll see what we've been focusing on as well as specific qualities I as the chief pilot want to bolster through our developmental sessions. These have served as the bedrock for our OPDs and this month's theme communication obviously plays into all these areas and is invaluable regardless of rank or position. So here's our topics for June. Uh, instead of just talking the basics, which are really covered in PME, daily job performance, and personal academic pursuits, I thought we would get a little philosophical as well as practical and maybe a little provocative. Uh, I hope you find these discussions useful and, if anything, provide you with a spark for elevated discourse with your peers and supervisors. Each month we highlight a book. Uh, of the month to enhance our learning and growth. Uh, Gates of Fire is another selection from the Marine Corps Commandants list. It's a 1998 historical fiction novel by Stephen Pressfield, and it recounts the Battle of Thermopylae through the viewpoint of one of the battle's survivors. Uh, it's taught at West Point, the Naval Academy, and the Marine Corps Basic School. It stresses the literary themes of fate and irony as well as military themes of honor, duty, stoicism, and esprit de corps. It's a quick, easy read, uh, thought-provoking, so check it out. All right, getting into this month's topic, speaking truth to power. Uh, it is critically important when beginning to discuss topics like this to define terms. Words mean something. And we should all be on the same page and understand what we're talking about from the jump. So what does it mean to speak truth to power? Uh, in some circles, it has political con connotations. For the purposes of this session, we will view truth to power as an articulation of an opinion to leadership and also discuss how to present views that are contrary to the mandates of leadership or regulation. In short, how to talk to a boss and how to advocate for what you think is right. Uh, the Air Force values, and one could say was founded, on contrarian and innovative thought. All of us have emotions and opinions, and what we want to get after here is that if your ideas are truly valuable, then we need to look at how to be effective in enacting them and look at negative behaviors that would prevent you from succeeding. Anyone can shout, this sucks, from the peanut gallery, but it takes some forethought, people skills, drive, and desire to actually create substantive change. A further definition of terms that might be controversial, some view speaking truth as speaking my truth. With respect to our careers as aviators and military professionals, I believe that there is no your truth, only objective truth. This is a major philosophical discussion so I'm setting the parameters for this video as our world is successful because of objective standards and practices in aviation. The idea of an individual truth is another word for opinion or perspective in this discussion, which serves elevated discourse as an obstacle. That is a point at which we apply communication and empathy to reach better understanding. So in order to understand and reach truth, we require context and perspective. Without these, we're simply spouting opinion, typically based in raw emotion, and lacking a deeper level of analysis required of professionals. This discussion really gets its cynicism uh, versus a constructive approach to everyday issues. As aircrew, we are very good at complaining. Uh, it's an art form to us. 
but we're also very good at operating. So, as the term goes, sport bitching is just that, sport. The seasoned members of our group will tell you that the practice is more about catharsis, relieving tension and venting frustration, but it's not a mode of operation. Once the venting is done, we get down to the real business of working the problem. Uh, that's what professionals do. As I've hinted at, in aviation terms, there's normal procedures and emergency procedures. Uh, by that I mean that we talk, we're going to talk briefly about how to engage leadership in day-to-day -day issues as well as how to approach those contrary opinions. On the next slide, we'll start by giving examples of what not to do and then present ideas on how best to approach this form of communication. So maybe you have an idea or maybe you have a strong feeling about a decision, a process, a procedure. What do we do with this? Let's first talk about what not to do. There's a book called Dealing with Difficult People that you can find online. Uh, there's a number of types, but for this short video, I'll cover some types I've seen in action. What makes these behaviors negative? These behaviors, overarchingly, tend to manifest out of raw emotion, lack perspective, and have no real aim other than a stimulus response to what is happening. I've encouraged our officers in other PD sessions to instead focus on the why things are happening, which inherently begs questions that lead to developing perspective and coming to common understanding. The negative behaviors we list here are a drain on individuals and the organization as a whole, depleting momentum, morale, and time. So first, you got the grenade thrower. This individual likes to poke holes in ideas or policy. They withhold key information until a crucial moment and drop it on the group with no follow-up, ideas on how to proceed, and apparently have no purpose other than stirring the pot. They view themselves as a gadfly or a righteous dissident, but add little to the discourse other than distraction. To avoid this trap, be open with communication and develop solutions to mitigate the contrary position you have developed. Two, the self-promoter. This person seizes the opportunity to speak or ask questions in order to articulate their accomplishments or highlight themselves to the team. They provide little substantive data and speak to boost their image. To avoid this, frame your comments in the context of the team. Questions or highlights should be framed in such a way that benefit the team and be objectively empathetic. Three, the time suck. This is the person who eats your time. They drone on in a meeting and lay out every thought, step in a process, go down rabbit holes, and this approach is tied to self-promotion. Uh, to prevent this, keep your approach limited to salient, hard-hitting points that apply to the group. Do not think, look at me and what I've done. Rather, boil down comments to what a boss needs to know in order to act, or something that addresses the thoughts of the group. Lastly, the dude or damsel in distress. This person demonstrates that they have not done their homework. They show up to a meeting and vocalize their problems or ask a question in a large forum that is complex and open-ended. Both are okay, but this type lays out their problems. They lay them at the feet of leadership or the group and provide no solutions. They want others to solve their problems for them, typically on the spot, without giving others the context that they would need to even start to address the issue. Before we speak, we should have spent some time doing our homework, and if we truly need to bring a problem to a group setting, be prepared to succinctly present context, because I promise you, those will be the first questions that others will ask. I'm not perfect, and we're all susceptible to sliding into these modes. That's okay, it's part of being human. The important thing is that we grow and learn, which is the whole reason we're talking about this stuff today, to identify issues so we can eliminate them and become better people. Taking a break this week, our unofficial sponsor is The Gab, the podcast by our own tech sergeant, Miko Morales. I am inspired myself listening to one of our own pontificate on a number of issues. It is thoughtful, thought-provoking, and really cool to hear one of our own thought leaders put themselves out there. Go to your Apple Play and give it a listen. All right, how it's done. Uh, you have a burning passion for a project or an opinion that you cannot silence. Maybe you feel there's an injustice in the system or you're filled with righteous indignation. Everyone feels this from time to time. And in the business, we sometimes call this being salty. Maybe you just have an idea you feel strongly should garner attention. Where do you go from here? First step, I would socialize 
your thoughts with peers and maybe one level up in leadership. Your peers and supervisors can provide you with the context and a sanity check. Let's say that you pass through this step and you approach leadership. How do you talk to a boss generally? The first thing I would suggest is to realize that whatever issue you have is not about you. By that I mean, when you bring a problem to someone, leadership, peer, or subordinate, you're asking them to invest their time and attention. You're forming a collaboration. You should first understand what your aim is and what you need from the person you're approaching. The best technique I've heard from a supervision standpoint is to ask someone who begins a talk like this to clarify three questions. Do you want me to listen? Do you want my advice? Do you need me to take action? Figure out what you're asking for and then rehearse the conversation. In the case of approaching leadership with a contrary opinion or challenging policy, realize first that no one is the villain in their own story. Generally, everyone acts in good faith and is doing what they think is best. If you truly feel from your perspective that something is wrong and you want to have that conversation, then empathy is key. Simon Sinek has a short video on this. You can find it on YouTube. So much cynicism comes from a lack of empathy, a soda straw view of the world that fails to account for the myriad factors that impact decisions. When approaching leadership, as Dale Carnegie would advise, do not criticize, condemn, or complain. The response to that approach will inevitably be shields up. Instead, come from a place of learning and articulate a desire to help, to promote growth and understanding. If you've heard nothing else today, hear this. Maintaining the relationship is key. Instead of hostility, exhibit curiosity. Show them that you want them and the unit to succeed. Conversations are like chess, not checkers. By this, I mean that you are in a debate of sorts. You do not only need to comp uh, contemplate your next move. You also need to think about the other person's move and then your next move after that. You should do your homework and be ready for counterpoints. This is how you really drive down into solving issues and prepare yourself to make a proposal. There are times to fall on your sword and hills to die on, but they are rarer than you think. Uh, we may have some angst about things that happen, but once we understand the why behind them happening and uh, that a disagreement is not relationship ending, sometimes it can enrich them. We can grow as people and innovate as an organization. If you've socialized your idea, sanity check your thought process, and find yourself in a meeting about a concern where, where you approach the issue with truly good motivations, you've met the minimum. At this point, when you're engaging with leadership, you need to have a plan. Articulate the problem. A problem is not a manifestation of your emotions. So if, when you're thinking about your problem statement, you begin with, I feel like, then you're going down a shaky road. Write out your proposal. Have data. Have something real. Achieving this, you need to have a solution. The real fix may be above your pay grade, but at a minimum, you need to demonstrate that you put the work in to try to address the issue yourself. This lends credibility and demonstrates commitment at your level and shows that you're just not throwing grenades or playing the role of the helpless. Succeeding in these tasks, you'll likely become part of the collaborative process to fix the issue. And congratulations, now the real work begins. All right, uh, hopefully Sergeant Morales brings some of that gospel news and brain food to get us thinking and talking Thursday. So we got the download with Miko for June 10 local. I got some questions for you to ponder, come ready to discuss. Uh, that's all I got. I hope you enjoyed this first PD and we'll see you Thursday. Have a good one.